Hello, Virgo. Welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. My name is Paul. If Virgo is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your tarot card reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. It is totally free. It doesn't cost you anything. If there's anything you would like me to pray over, or meditate upon, or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger, and I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Virgo, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And here is a, a four of wands. Very nice. Um, this is um, something's uh, coming to a uh, something's coming to a completion. It's not a big project. It's not like it's not this um, the giant leap that we talk about. This is like um, one more step on the path. Now you're getting something done. You're putting the finishing touches on something, and it's kind of ready to go out the door. You know. Um, this is kind of like we are, um, I don't know, I feel like you're producing something. I feel like you're making things, more than one thing. Yeah, we're going to have to put this into some context. This card is also, it's fire and earth, right? It's the, the suit of wands, it is the fire energy in a temporary manifestation, a configuration of the number four, right? So it has this stability. But we see that it's a wheel as well, right? We're kind of squaring the circle here. Uh, you are implementing some sort of a system in your life of creation, right? You've kind of, you've gotten into a groove, you've gotten into a routine of, of like your creative expression, right? And it, it, that feels really, really good. And look at that. Well, if that isn't your creativity, I don't know what is. And this is really giving you, I think whatever this is, maybe this is a business, this is some kind of a routine, right, that you've, you've got a system that's really allowing you a lot of freedom in your life. It could be that we're starting some sort of a new uh, side business, maybe like a cottage business or maybe like an Etsy thing or something or starting your own kind of YouTube channel. You're starting something that is really allowing you to express your creativity and it's something that now is being, oh, look at that, now we've got your power card. Yeah, this is really nice, um, especially coming off the reading that we did the other day. Um, this is really, this is really beautiful. I see that you you're doing great things with your energy, with your creative energy right now. We've got five of wands. We've got the world or universe card. Oh, we've got a four of swords. We've got a knight of wands, a seven of swords, and hmm. Okay, and we've got a queen of swords. Over here, it looks like there is a situation that you need some clarity about. There's some, someone in your life feels like an older male energy that you're having it just kind of a, a hard time understanding or it feels like they're kind of hard to read. It's hard to gauge kind of what's going on with them. You've got your own stuff that you're doing here and you're really ready. Um, you know, I realized that we're missing. We're missing a card here. I had the fool over here like this. I, I realized that we're missing a card. We're gonna have to do a couple extras. So let's let's select a bit of a mystery card here. Um, on this side, it, it does feel like there's someone that you're having a difficult uh, relationship with. It feels like there's, there's kind of a stalemate with the communication. There's just some sort of a blockage here. And I feel like you're looking for clarity with someone. It feels like an older male energy. Over here, I feel like you've got your own thing going. You've got your whole life going. And you're really, you, you're doing this. You're doing something. You're putting your effort into something that is um, an expression of who you are. Here's going to be this card here for the future position. Look at that. Beautiful, stable, steady growth. That's, this is really nice. You're kind of doing your own thing here. You've started your own side business. Maybe it's your main business, right? And it's really, it's really becoming very successful. And it feels like you are transcending, that you are kind of moving on and you're growing and you're developing your life. But maybe over here, maybe there's somebody in your life that feels kind of left out. Yeah. And maybe that's what's going on with them. 
or they they feel as if you, as if you're making all of this progress again another like giant spiritual leap for you in the form or of these kind of these incremental goals these step by step these these creations it's like you're just maybe you're like you're making jewelry or something and it's just one piece at a time and you're making it and it's just it's not a lot it maybe it's not huge right now but it certainly has the potential to become very huge this could expand and grow into a very lucrative uh, business or project or enterprise for you but right now it just feels good to be creating something and I kind of am getting that jewelry vibe. I don't know if you're putting, doing something, you're, I don't know what it is. Something with your hands, very meticulous. Yeah. But then over here, it's, it feels like there's just, they're having a hard time communicating with this particular person. They may be a fire sign person, but maybe not. I feel like this is just someone that um, isn't really on the same page as you. And it's kind of hard to, it's kind of like when you're coming, they're going. When when you're going, they're coming. And it's just you just keep passing each other and there's there's really not this connection that we need. All right. Let's select the actual mystery card. And this is a random card from the Smith Weight Tarot. And we're just gonna set this down right over here. We're gonna put our very own Kelly Kapoor right down on top. Anybody can tell me um, who Kelly Kapoor is um, gets a cookie, right? Uh, but the mystery card's going to tie everything together. It's going to give us the confirmation that we need. And if you feel like you know what that card is, because I know your intuition is really heightened right now, I want you to put your prediction down in the comments. We can do it together. We can exercise our intuition like it's a muscle, you know. Um, Let's look around again. We've got major arcana energy right, right down the line here. This is really nice. This is a great flow. This is the hermit to the fool to the entire, you know, we have the beginning and the end. And it's kind of you, it's you now identifying both with um, the kind of with the nothingness, right? That cosmic nothingness inside and outside. You're, you're kind of like this, um, it's almost as if we've kind of... Um, we kind of lost our individuality a little bit, not in a bad way. I mean that we, we no longer feel separate from the universe. We feel like we are the universe, that we are part of the universe. And it's not something that I can really talk about. It's your, your experience. It's your feeling. I feel like your consciousness has kind of merged with the universe, right? This is the little zero. This is the big zero. Yeah. And I feel as if your hermit energy, your is your power card again, Virgo, has really gone through this spiritual awakening. And this is reflective, I think, of the last reading that we had for you, which indicated this very, um, very significant spiritual leveling up, right? A, a spiritual graduation, I've heard some people say. And um, I think it's reflected here, and I think this is really kind of what it's what we're talking about. And now we're taking that experience um, which again, it's not something that you can talk about with this person. This is kind of, this is that energy that just feels a little bit out of place. It's almost like they haven't experienced what you've experienced. And so there's this, it's difficult to talk to them, you know, in that deeper meaning, more meaningful way. Okay. So I think this is really, this is on your mind right now is this relationship, whether it's a family member, a friend, whether it's a coworker, whether it's your significant other, um, Whoever it might be, I feel like that's that's something that's on your mind. All right. Uh, but we'll start over here. And the five of the five of of wands here, this is the fight. This is the battling. This is really um, in some ways, this card is saying that, look, you've had to fight for your attainments, for your accomplishments, for your freedom, for your your creativity, for your will. You've had to fight for what you have and where you are that um, y you deserve it. You've earned it, right? Like darn right you're going to enjoy it and immerse yourself in this and allow it to be what it is. Uh, you're not going to put it on hold for anybody. You're not going to like sacrifice it for anybody. No, this is like a once in a lifetime spiritual graduation, if you will. Um, and so you're going, you're immersing yourself in it. 
you fought hard for what you have in life in a very practical way. I feel like this is, this is really um, the struggle. This card represents the struggle. Sometimes you feel as if the universe was kind of fighting you. Sometimes it felt like you had to kind of fight against the universe. So the five of wands is sometimes us being defensive and trying to avoid the blows. Other times it's us giving the blows to life, you know, fighting, pushing forward for what we want. Sometimes it's, it's about holding our ground and not letting life push back, right? And I feel like that's kind of been the struggle for you for a, a while for like, I mean, that's, that's life, you know? And now you're in this position where I think you're, you're working on something in a very practical way. You've got this little, right now it might be, right now it feels like it's kind of a little thing. It feels like it's a little business. It's a side thing. It's a project. It's something that you're, you're investing your time, your energy, and your creative will into. And it's something that may take a little bit of time to grow and blossom and bear fruit. But you don't mind that because you're manifesting your creativity. You are really enjoying the work. Again, it's like, as an example, you're creating, you know, beautiful pieces of jewelry. And that in itself is such a wonderful process for you, creating these beautiful things. Um, and maybe you're working with clay. I don't know. Maybe you're blowing glass or something. But it's the process. It's that what you enjoy that so much. And yeah, you're going to take that and you're going to advertise it and market it and try to sell it and make some money. And then here we see some of that money coming in. It really is bearing fruit in a very practical way. Which I think is, it's kind of a side benefit. But what's really interesting is that this has the potential to blossom and grow into something beyond belief. Something really, really major. It's going to, it could, if you continue doing what you're doing and focus on the quality, this thing could really blow up beyond your expectations into something huge and really bringing in a lot of money, right? So I think it's starting out small. It's starting out as just you, just doing what you doing what you love to do, putting something together or designing something. I don't know exactly what. It feels like jewelry to me. Um, but it really could develop into something that is, now this is your full-time job now, right? Something that's going to be beyond belief, um, um, you know, lucrative for you. Uh, I like the fool energy very much, especially right in the center, because I feel like you've let go of a lot of attachments. There's a lot of things that you just, that don't, that just, they, they flow through you. Experiences, good days, bad days, wins and losses. It just feels like you deal with them as they come and then you let them go. Nothing sticks. Nothing sticks and accumulates like that, you know, that sticky residue of life that's just drags you down day after day until we just feel like, um, we feel just like like putty or something or just sticky jelly i don't know um uh we've got a four-year almost four-year-old daughter so i'm really used to that kind of stickiness on everything right everything's got like dried jelly on it or just you know um from her she loves like play-doh and clay and stuff like that and just all that stickiness everywhere um but i digress i feel like you're letting it you're letting a lot of things go things don't bother you like they used to because you've you got a glimpse of what's really important in your life. And, you know, not that the things of the material world are not important, but they don't need to consume you, right? And that's really the consume, letting something consume you. Think about that word. That's a very powerful image. We had a bad day. We had a, you know... Um, uh, unexpected repair, something broke, we had to fix the car, something like that. There's like a, you know, something happened in life. We let that energy consume us. If it's grief, if it's sadness, if it's disappointment, if it's anger, frustration, we let it consume us and suddenly the fool is gone, even the hermit is gone, and what you are now is nothing but anger. You are just anger. It has consumed you. Your true self, your, well, your true self here, and your, um, your Virgo self, right, your magical self, are no longer present. It's just, you, you have been consumed by this, 
this beast, right, this monster. And I feel like maybe that's how life was. We've all experienced that sort of thing where we're consumed by an emotion, right, related to an event or something, and it just, it really does overpower us, where we lose, we lose ourself, but not in the way, not in that mystical way that we're, we're talking about with the fool, right? The fool is the transcendence above um, all of these calamities, all of these emotions, all this turmoil of life. It's still there. We still experience it. We still feel grief and anger and rage sometimes, but we don't let it consume us. We just we feel it. We let it go. We don't identify with it. The fool is that zero. This is that point event of consciousness that has no qualities to it can mix with every other thing, every event, every experience, but just remains completely pure. A pure spirit, right? And this just so happens to be right in the middle of your energy right now. So in the turmoil and in the calm seas, you know, you are, you are still this pure essence. And you're manifesting that essence through this very practical work that you're doing which is also, we have the Hermit, we have that power card. Um, this is your superpower, I think, to really get focused on what you are creating with the Earth energy. So you've got Earth up here. This is Earth. This is Earth. The Four of Wands is the fire manifested on Earth. Okay? So your Virgo energy, your power energy, is really your ability to to focus and stay pure in these tasks that you're doing, right? And it's not just this jewelry thing or whatever, you're bl blowing glass or something, but in everything, in, all, in your chores, in your routines, in your, your self-care, in just the daily life, you really have this focus and this purity about what you're doing where it's just, it's almost a mystical act in itself. Something, something very holy about it something very meditative about it. And you're just scrubbing dishes, but it just feels blissful. It feels, it feels still. That's the feeling I'm getting. There's a stillness about you. And it really is a weird feeling. Do you feel that? It feels like suddenly there's this weightlessness and that's something I, I've often experienced with the Fool card. There's this weightlessness. There's this idea that the Fool is still, silent, quiet, not moving. But yet, life is flowing through it in all directions, swirling around. But the Fool has this stillness, this quiet grin, right? Look at, look at that face. Who couldn't love that face, that quiet grin? And I really feel that in you right now. It feels like there is this weightlessness, this stillness. Nothing feels heavy. You, you feel that? Nothing feels like it's pulling you down or squishing you. There's this lightness. I, I feel like if I, if I maybe let go of the desk, I would float up out of this chair. That's what it feels like right now. That's, that's, a, that's a beautiful thing. Let's go to the path of the serpent. Let's talk about what's going on here with this. Um, I think there is, I mean... Obviously, this is, this is something that you're experiencing. But you also have a life to live, right? You also have relationships. You also you got problems like everybody else, right? You're still human, I'm pretty sure. Um, so we have conflict sometimes. Sometimes we, we, we're trying to listen, but we can't really hear what the other person is saying. We try to, to pay attention. And, and now you've got this kind of... You've got this balancing act because you, you are experiencing this kind of weightlessness, this creativity, this really magical, mystical holiness, this holy experience, right? And you're also now trying to maintain or cultivate a relationship with whoever this person is. Okay. Um, Spirit's telling me that you've been doing a lot of singing lately. Is that, is that something you do? You've been singing more, uh, more often than, than you used to. Yeah. I don't know if you have a good voice or not, but you've been doing it. Yeah. And I think that's wonderful. Um, I think we get, we get in that zone and we really, it's like that, that whistling while you work kind of thing. 
It's just, um, it's a way of maintaining this state of energy through art. It's a way of channeling, channeling that spiritual energy into the work that we're doing. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the four of, of swords here, your general energy, trying to figure out what's going on with with this relationship. Now, I don't read third parties, you know. Um, if this is someone in your life and it seems like they are around you in your environment at least, whether it's the work environment, the home environment, or the internal environment, this person is with you, right? I don't read third parties. I get um, impressions from, sometimes from, from spirits that um, are not on the physical plane any longer, you know. But if this is somebody literally in your life, I can't tell you too much about them. And I think it's Spirit's way of saying, well, you can just go talk to them. You don't need me to be the go-between, you know? Like uh, sometimes my daughter, if she's mad at me for whatever reason, she'll say, Mom, please tell Dad that I want him to scratch my back. She likes when I scratch her back at night, you know? So she'll relay messages where it's just like, he wants you two just talk to each other, you know? And so that's, I think, what Spirit is telling me when there's a third party involved. So this is one of those things where it's like, well, just go talk to them. But see, you've tried that. So that's why we're in a bit of a pickle. Uh, you're trying to listen, but you're not understanding what it is that they're trying to, they're, they're trying to come at you with. What is it that they need? What is it that they want? Maybe they've been a little bit frustrated lately. Yeah. Um, I almost wonder if... Like I said before, if this person is kind of seeing you do this, realize that something is different about you, and they're just feeling a little bit um, frustrated, not with you, but frustrated with themselves that they don't have that, you know, that they haven't experienced that. So it's a, it may be a little bit of envy, but it's frustration that's being projected onto you. And maybe it seems like this person's kind of always mad or always frustrated with you. It's just because they're not experiencing what you're experiencing, but they want to. At least that's the, that's the feeling that I'm getting. Okay. Um, June is a very important month for you, isn't it? I don't know what is happening in June. Something is, some June something for you. Spirit's telling me June. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, the... Back to the, let's talk about the Four of, of Swords. The Four of Swords really is us, we don't want conflict. It's not that we avoid it, but we're just, we don't, we don't care. We don't, that's not our energy. We just, nothing is bothering you that much where you want to fight and argue about it, you know? So there's this Four, there's this kind of silence. It's just kind of like, you know, you're here to listen and you, you'll talk and you'll communicate, but you're not going to um, you're not going to go digging for that that needle in the haystack to try to figure out what somebody what's going on with somebody else and it's not because you don't care but it's because you've got your own things going on and it's in some way you've you've I'm trying to figure out a way to say this that doesn't sound callous but you've transcended that sort of BS you know not that it's meaningless, not that it's really BS, not that it's not important or significant, but it's not something that you're going to let consume you. You will give it attention and effort and you will be very compassionate and, um, you know, you will listen and you will speak and you will, you know, you care, but it's not going to consume you. It's not going to be your entire consciousness anymore. Maybe at one point it was, but not anymore. Do you have a Buddha statue near you? I feel like you do. I feel like there's a there's a Buddha um, kind of looking at you right now. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> in your environment, we do have this Knight of Wands, and it might be somebody in your life that you feel is kind of is acting a little bit. I don't know if it's inappropriate, but kind of not acting like themselves, or they're acting a little bit erratic. Um, not in like a scary, dangerous way, but just something's not normal. Some, there's, there's something bothering them. Yeah. And it might be that they're kind of, they're trying to hurry. They just, they've got this frantic energy. They're running around the house like they're late for something and you can't figure out what it is. 
And I wonder if part of this too is our perception that the world has slowed way down for you. So everybody else looks like they're rushing around. You know? You ever look at ants? You ever watch ants? They seem like they're always running frantically around. You know, maybe they are, I don't know. But I wonder if that's just perspective. Yeah. I feel like it is. Um, not that ants aren't fast. They are fast. But I think it's a matter of perspective. I think we may feel that the whole world is rushing around. Right? This is the card of the environment. Maybe the whole environment seems like it's just everybody's nuts. Everybody's just rushing frantically from place to place to place to place to place while you're here, still, calm, quiet, blowing your glass or making your jewelry or whatever it is. Right? Maybe you're knitting something. I don't know. That could be knitting, right? Or sewing. <clears throat> But the whole world seems like they've lost it, that they are just frantic. Everybody is late for something. But what is everybody late for? Yeah. So it could be perspective. That's just that's my way of illustrating that. Whatever's going on with that person, it could be something that's just we're perceiving that they're acting unusual, but maybe that's how they usually are. Maybe that's how everybody is. Yeah. But there's still this communication thing that we're talking about. There's still this this weird blockage, right? We've got that seven of, of swords now. It seems like your attempts to communicate have been kind of um, not effective. Yeah. There's been uh, difficulties. There's been blockages. There's been misunder misunderstandings. Okay. And uh, there's really no... There's no, you know, there's no overt solution here. We get up here to the queen of swords, water and air. This is, in some ways, your, your tranquility. This is you kind of feeling like you're up there floating, and then everything else is kind of down here. And again, it could be that this whole situation is perspective. Maybe, um, and see, I don't want to pull you down from this cloud. I don't want to bring you down from the spiritual height that you're, that you're at now. But I feel like there is a perspective uh, that needs to shift uh, to see maybe things from the, the other point of view, from down here on earth, how everything kind of seems like this is the normal pace of things. But when you're way up here looking down, it seems like a bunch of ants just scurrying everywhere. Okay. So this card is really a lot of clarity. It's about us seeking an objective viewpoint of, of things. And um, it's a very strange dichotomy that we have here because, again, I don't want to pull you down from those spiritual heights. At the same time, you've got to look at, at all the perspectives. You, got, you have to strive for clarity. Look at this situation from, from above, you know, as you are, and try to see... What really is the bigger picture here? Who is this person to you, first of all? How might they be perceiving you? See, this person has taken the mask off. They are now acutely aware of how other people see them. And this is, this, this is part of spiritual attainment. This is the curse of it, right? Is that you now can see things from all of these points of view. You can see yourself the way other people see you. And that takes some getting used to. You ever look in a mirror... Or you see a photograph or something, and it looks like your face is different. Because you're seeing, you're seeing yourself the way other people see you. And so it looks odd. Because we're used to seeing ourselves in a mirror. Right? The, same, the, the way we see ourselves is not how other people see us, right? Because things are, are reversed or whatever. Um, and I'm, I'm sure you know, when you take two mirrors and put them together, you look in the corner, that's what you see. Or, or photographs when the, the images aren't flipped. Most cameras and stuff will flip the image so that you're, it's like you're looking in a mirror rather than looking at a, you know, a third perspective. Um, and that's part, of this, that's part of this energy is understanding how other people see you and how they might be reacting to you. And there's nothing good or bad, right or wrong about any of it. It's just, it's just the way it is, right? It's just that trying to get an objective assessment of what's going on. But we have to know, you know, first of all, who this person is, what they mean to you. Let's look at the mystery card. 
<clears throat> maybe this will help us. So we don't have any water energy here. So I don't know that this is a romantic person. It could be uh, differences at work with a creative partner. It could be family members, I guess. Um, but it's hard to tell because I feel this is just the fire energy. I feel that there's just some, there's just some friction between the two of you. And it could just, that could just be the way it is. You know, maybe there's no solution really that needs to, needs to, to play out here. And I say solution carefully because it's water, right? Putting things into solution, dissolving things in water, right? So we'll see what the mystery card is. I think it's going to be some water to find that solution, you know. If you have a prediction, put it down in the comments. Let's see what we have. Oh, page of pentacles. That's not water. Um, it, it's not water. It's kind of, it's almost a card that says, like, mind your own business in a way, Right? It's kind of a card that just says you're, and maybe this is part of it, that you're busy um, seeing everything for the first time, you know, that you're caught up in this awe and this splendor of life, you know, and maybe that person feels a little bit left out. Maybe they feel a little excluded because like the Page of Pentacles, you're finding the magic in the mundane. You're finding the extra in the ordinary. You're finding spirit under every, every stone. You know, you're finding the, muti the, the music and the beauty. I was going to say beauty. Um, the music and the beauty in everything for the first time. It's this wonderment, this amazement. And maybe that's, maybe that person feels a little bit left out. Right. And there's, again, there's nothing right or wrong. I'm not trying to pull you down from this. This is the best experience of life. This is what it's all about. Right. But we, we are also aiming for wholeness, too. And that's part of what the universe card is. We're trying to have this balanced and holistic life. So we do need to figure out this relationship. Who is this person? What do they mean to you? And um, maybe they just need, maybe that's your pet. just needs a little bit more attention, right? Maybe it's, it's literally like your dog or your cat. Um, just needs a little bit more attention. You're out here um, wide-eyed and, and, you know, amazed at the world. And they're like, What's the big fuss? What are you looking at? What is, what is over there? You know? And so maybe this is just something that we need to say, you come with me, look up there, you know? And again, it's like the finger pointing at the moon. You can't, you can't force them to see what you see, but that's not really your responsibility either, you know? There's a lot going on here. Feel free to ask questions, leave comments, and all that good stuff. We're going to do an extended reading. If you want to stick around, there's a link up here in the corner. There's one down below above and below, right? New readings for Virgo every Tuesday and Saturday. I'm here every day. You can come back. We'll talk again tomorrow. There's plenty of time. If you haven't subscribed yet, Virgo, please do. Totally free. It doesn't cost you anything, all right? Leave a comment for me. Like I said, let me know how you're doing. Let me know where in the world you're watching from. Let me know what your, what your business is. Yeah. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. Um, also go check out my wife's channel. She does tea leaf readings, really marvelous work. Her channel is Ula tea leaf readings, U L A tea leaf readings. All right. And I want you to know Virgo that you are the most important part of dove and serpent tarot. I thank you and I love you. And we're all in this together.